Have you ever been told that your total cholesterol or LDL cholesterol is high and you should be worried about it? If that's you, this video was made for you. Hi, I'm Dr. Hampton, a board certified family and obesity medicine doctor and with a master's in nutrition and functional medicine. And so many of my patients come to me asking me about their total cholesterol and their LDL and they're very worried. And today's video is to make you think a little differently about your LDL cholesterol. And, and let's start with the total cholesterol, which so many doctors tell you you should be worried about. And, and this is what I want you to know. As you can see from this slide, your total cholesterol is actually the combination of other lipoproteins, including the so-called bad LDL cholesterol, the so-called good HDL, and your triglycerides. So imagine if you have a very high good cholesterol, then that'll make your total cholesterol high. That one little fact is enough of a reason not to focus on your total cholesterol. That's number one. Number two is that LDL cholesterol. And as you can see from this graph, your LDL cholesterol in most health systems is desirable at a level below 130. Now, in, and I would even consider in some settings, that's considered suboptimal where they really want it to be less than 100. But for purposes of this video, we're saying that if it's less than 130, then you're in pretty good shape. So the question is, what should we do with that information? So what I did is I did a little research for you and I went all the way back to 2009. What's crazy is that this information has been known since 2009 when they did this observational study. And they looked at the lipid levels in patients hospitalized with coronary artery disease. In other words, when they walked through the door of the hospital, what was their LDL or so-called bad cholesterol values? And that was in 136,000 hospitalized patients. So this study was aimed to analyze the admission levels of the lipids, and they looked at the population that they had in front of them. And what they concluded from the study is that half those people with coronary artery disease, half the people had LDL cholesterol, it's not at 130, but less than 100. So you should really pause. And, and that's almost like you got a 50-50 chance. So we have a lot of emphasis on this LDL cholesterol, but half the people who have coronary artery disease have a normal LDL. And, and if you take it even further and look at the data in more detail, uh, an even larger number of patients who were hospitalized had an LDL level less than 130, which is considered uh, you know, close to go. So, so and, and if you break that down, it's 77%. Now I wanna pause for a moment and have you reflect on that. 77% of the people who have coronary artery disease in this study had a, uh, a cholesterol LDL that was in a reasonable range. So that should make you pause and ask, us, ask yourself, well, why are we putting so much emphasis on this LDL? And, and I would argue that we shouldn't. And it's not that the LDL doesn't matter. There are large and small particles, and I'll probably share more information about that in a, another video. But to, to imagine that 77% of the people who have heart attacks have a LDL in a reasonable range should make you think, well, there's got to be another way. There's got to be a better way to figure out your risk for having a heart attack. And so the answer to that question is there are better ways to figure that out. So when you think about this video, I want you to ask your doctor, ask your advanced practice clinician to at least consider these tests to understand your risk. The number one test, and this is from the American Heart Association, as of March of 2022, they said that the coronary artery calcium score test, as you see pictured, is the best test to predict a future heart attack. And as you can see from the second image, the areas that are in white are your arteries in, around your heart. And if they're in white, that means there's plaques. You want to get a score as close to zero as possible. And anything over 400, you may have to have additional testing. It depends on what you and your doctor decide. The second test that's really critical that some clinicians haven't been ordering is a fasting insulin level. And as you can see from this graph, yes, are there things we can look at in terms of risk factors for the cholesterol and LDL? Maybe. But your blood pressure is even more predictive of a heart attack. And as you can see, uh, 6.7 times more predictive is the high insulin level. So I advise all of you guys get a 
a heart scan for a coronary artery calcium score and get yourself a fasting insulin level. Additional tests that are automatically done when you do a cholesterol level is your triglycerides to HDL ratio. If you get that test, your goal is to get it, you know, less than a ratio of two, as you can see from this graph, and anything less than a two when you divide the triglycerides by the HDLs is way more predictive than a total cholesterol or a LDL. There's another test that you can get called the apolipoprotein B to A ratio. And this is another test that you can do, uh, have your doctor do to predict whether or not you're at risk for a heart attack. That's way better than an LDL cholesterol test. And here's another called the lipoprotein a small particle A test. And that test additionally is a better predictor of a future heart attack. So I wanted to give you guys a very quick, simple, easy to understand video on how you can predict your risk for having a heart attack with way better tests than a total cholesterol or LDL. So if you know anybody who's still worried about their total cholesterol and their LDL, uh, share this video with them because maybe this will give them uh, some tools, a way to guide them as they collaborate with their clinician on what's the next, next best test. So I really appreciate you guys coming to my channel. Uh, I'm looking forward to sharing more insightful information with you. And if you like my channel, like and subscribe it, of course, and, and, and hit that bell so you can get an announcement of when we make new videos. So until we have another video, I only ask that you continue to be safe, be well, and continue to protect your nest.